This week on Jerusalem Dateline, protests rock parts of Iran, with some calling for the end of the Islamic regime. Plus, an historic visit to Israel by other Iranians who want to bless the Jewish people. And tennis becomes a bridge over the Jewish-Arab divide. And Amitzin, a place where widows and orphans find a refuge. All this and more this week on Jerusalem Dateline. Hello and welcome to this edition of Jerusalem Dateline. I'm Chris Mitchell. Massive protests in one Iranian province have now spread to other parts of the country. The demonstrations began over a lack of water, but have now grown to calls for regime change. Thousands of angry Iranians are marching through the streets of southwestern Awaz, also known as Khuzestan. The people accusing the government of diverting water from their land as part of an ethnic war. They use the water as a weapon to force or a forcibly migrating the Ahwazi people because Ahwaz land is the heartbeat of Iranian economy, such as oil, gas. Faisal Maramazi of the Awazi Center for Human Rights calls the severe water shortage an environmental catastrophe. Thousands of dead fish, dry riverbeds, and devastated farmland. This shepherd says his flocks won't drink the sewage-filled water. For humans, it's a matter of life or death, as illustrated by this desperate woman drinking from a puddle. The Hawazi woman was telling the popular committee, please don't stop coming to our village. We are dying because there is no water. Please do come regularly to us. That's the lady telling. Imagine in 21st century, Ahwazi people are nearly going to die because of the severe water crisis. In a violent crackdown, Iranian police are firing live ammunition, killing some protesters and injuring hundreds. Still, the protests continue. Ahwazi people has nothing to lose because everything been taken from them. Outgoing President Rouhani dismissed the demonstrations. A few hundred people are not the people of Khuzestan. And others are springing up, like this in Tehran's metro, calling for the overthrow of the government and death to the dictator. U.S. Senator Marco Rubio tweeted, the U.S. should stand in support of the protesters instead of negotiating a deal with the evil regime in Tehran. That nuclear deal being renegotiated by the Biden administration would give the regime billions of dollars in sanctions relief, and some say clear the way for a nuclear Iran. It would also enable Iran full access to the oil markets, which could increase the speed of environmental destruction in Awaz. In what could be a significant development, these internet posters are calling on the country's second largest ethnic group, the Yaziri people in the north to join the protests. If the South Azerbaijani Turk will come to the street, everything will change in Iran and could collapse the Iranian regime in the nearest future. It remains to be seen how far this movement will spread, and some remain skeptical of any regime collapse at this time. Meanwhile, in an ominous sign, the government has shut down the internet in the Awazi province. After that move with protests in 2019, the regime killed 1,500 demonstrators. While these protests continue inside the country, some Iranians came to Israel for the first time to show support to the Jewish people. This group came with the Institute for Voices of Liberty, which is dedicated to encouraging democracy in Iran. Eli Kohenim's family fled the republic when she was five years old. They are here to tell the people of Israel that they support them and they reject the Iranian regime's anti-Semitism and genocidal desire to wipe Israel off the Guys, face of the earth. In 1979, the revolution led by Ayatollah Khomeini turned Iran from a pro-Western power to a country dedicated to destroying Israel and spreading its Islamic beliefs worldwide. These Iranians call the past 42 years an aberration in Iran's long history. Unfortunately, this regime is at war with 
Iranian history, culture, civilization, and most importantly, Iranian values of tolerance and acceptance. Yeah. We're here to make it very clear to the people of Israel that the Iranian people stand with the people of Israel, and we condemn the regime in Iran, which is an occupying force. For the past year, the world has heard about the Abraham Accords. One of the goals of this mission is to let people know about what they call the Cyrus Accords. Abraham Accords, of course, as everybody here knows, is uh, a peace agreement between Israel and its Arab neighbors. We feel that just as that peace was hard to believe that it would happen, and it did happen, Cyrus Accords, a peace a deal between Israel and uh, a future free democratic Iran, uh, is possible as well. These accords are named after the Persian king, who allowed the Jews to rebuild the second temple in Jerusalem. And so the uh, Iranian people believe that for 2,500 years there were warm relations between the people of Israel and people of Iran. My story is really the prime example of that. You know, the Iranian Jews, we were the, one of the most ancient Jewish communities in the world. We lived side by side our neighbors for over 2,500 years. I am Iranian culturally. You know, my heart is still with my brothers and sisters in the country. And so this regime that came in in 1979, they are a complete aberration. They preach hatred, but the people are rejecting it. Ahmed Batabi served two years in an Iranian jail as a police political prisoner. The main message is uh, we are not your enemy. We love you. We can be not necessarily friend. We can be brother. We have a lot of, uh, you know, uh, uh, cultural values that we can make uh, a, a good uh, Middle East with, with these values. Although the mission traveled throughout the country, they felt it significant as Iranians to visit Jerusalem, the city a once great Persian ruler helped to rebuild. I wish you could have seen the various delegates saw when they walked in the city of David, when they heard the history that stems through uh, from Cyrus the Great uh, through various millennia and how much the two people have in common. And I think it just reinforced the reason why they came here and we hope that this is not a one-off, that this is a beginning of a long-term process which ine inevitably ends up in peace and prosperity for both people right after they sign the Cyrus Accords, of course. In the meantime, their hearts remain back home. Lots of my countrymen inside Iran, which I talk to them, I read their messages, they are hoping, they are desperate and are waiting every minute, every second for the uh, dismantlement of the Iranian Islamic Republic. Coming up, Ben & Jerry says it won't sell its famous ice cream to the West Bank, Israel's biblical heartland. It is the most important archaeological site. Nevertheless, it has never been excavated. An almost impossible task. The Temple Mount was the largest religious compound in the ancient world. It is the most politicized piece of real estate in the world. Leads to an improbable find. There is an ancient road, also 2,000 years old. That is the building which is referred to in the New Testament that is confirming the stories of the Bible. Where did Jesus walk? There's no question he walked on these steps. You can see it. There's no way to refute that. They existed. They walked here. They talked here. See the evidence left by an ancient witness. He lived there. He saw it. He knew the details. And it's like the crown of our discoveries. May cause a rewriting of the history of the Temple Mount. And discover what was written in stone, Secrets of the Temple. Get your copy today for a gift of any dollar amount. Available now. Watch breaking news, in-depth exclusive stories and programs from health to entertainment. You won't find anywhere else. The CBN News Channel, a perspective you can trust. Enjoy credible news reporting from around the world. Discover inspiring programs and stories of hope. All in one place from a Christian perspective. The CBN News Channel, a perspective you can trust. To watch the CBN News Channel, download the app or visit CBNNewsChannel.com. The Bible tells us to pray for the peace of Jerusalem. In CBN's free guide, 10 Ways You Can Pray for Israel, you'll learn spiritual lessons from Israel's patriarchs, prophets, and beloved New Testament leaders while also discovering how you can pray for Israel today. Get your free copy. Call 1-800-700-7000 or go to cbn.com slash pray for Israel.
The Boycott, Divestment and Sanctions Movement, or BDS, against Israel seemed to score a major victory when Ben & Jerry's announced it would prohibit the sale of its ice cream in Israeli settlements in the West Bank. And Israel is pushing back. Israeli Foreign Minister Yair Lapid went on the offensive after Ben & Jerry's ice cream announced it will no longer sell its products in Jewish communities in the West Bank and Jewish neighborhoods in eastern Jerusalem. Ben & Jerry's decision is a shameful surrender to anti-Semitism, to BDS, to all that is evil in the anti-Israel and anti-Jewish discourse. We won't stay silent. Ben & Jerry's decision gives a boost to BDS that has targeted Israel for more than a decade. More than 30 states in the U.S. have anti-BDS submission laws passed in recent years. I'm going to go one by one and require them to enforce these anti-Ben and Jerry's laws because they will not treat us in this way without encountering a response. Israel's ambassador to the U.S., Gilad Erdan, tweeted that he sent a letter to 35 U.S. state governors saying, I ask you to consider speaking out against the company's decision and taking any other relevant steps, including in relation to your state laws and commercial dealing between Ben and Jerry's and your state. Ben and Jerry's issued a statement saying it was inconsistent with its values for its ice cream to be sold in what it called occupied Palestinian territory. But its parent company, Unilever, said it had prevented the ice cream maker from boycotting Israel proper too. Israel gained control of the West Bank, Gaza, and all Jerusalem during the 1967 Six-Day War. Known as Judea and Samaria, some 700,000 Israelis live in areas they believe are part of their biblical heritage. It doesn't make any sense, but it makes sense if you're anti-Semitic and you hate Israel. This is perfect. I'll do it over something more important than ice cream. Rabbi Yitzhak Adlerstein of the Simon Wiesenthal Center told CBN News that many are underestimating the impact of the boycott. To link Ben and Jerry's, to link that corporate image with the idea that Israel is a colonialist, brutal oppressor of a country that was stillborn and shouldn't be here, that's the real problem. Because once one company does that, then other companies will find it much easier to follow suit. Rabbi Adlerstein says the most important action people can take is to approach their local supermarket manager. And say, hey, I'm just putting a suggestion forward. Ben and Jerry's now sticks in the throats of lots of people who shop here. But they were not telling you, we're going to boycott you unless you remove Ben and Jerry's from your shelves. But we'd appreciate it if maybe you can downgrade them, maybe you can give them a little less favorable place in the, in the, on, on display. The Palestinian Authority applauded the boycott, calling it legal and moral. And the Palestine Solidarity Campaign tweeted, this is huge, very important step by Ben and Jerry's and a message to all complicit companies. The tide of history is turning. Unlike this standard coffee flavor, the boycott has inspired a number of satirical flavors on social media by those opposing the boycott including one called Push the Jews into the Sea Salt and Caramel. Israelis are now hoping this boycott by Ben & Jerry's will melt away in the summer heat. Coming up, the sport of tennis becomes a way to build a bridge between Israel's Jews and Arabs. Now, for a limited time, you can get five of CBN's critically acclaimed documentaries. Experience the rebirth of the modern state of Israel the historic bonds between the Jewish people and the land of Israel cannot be broken. Relive the battle for Jerusalem in the Six-Day War. Jerusalem is yours forever. Discover how Israeli volunteers are changing the world. When people need us, we volunteer and we come and help. Explore the world of Israeli technological innovation. We're people of dreams. God gives us dreams. And that's really the roots, I think, of, of much of our innovation. And understand the biggest land dispute in history. Many Palestinian Arabs claim that the Jews stole Arab land. But is that the real story? This exclusive Israel DVD collection can be yours for a gift of $40 or more. Call now or go online to get your Israel DVD bundle today. Here. 
were committed to a heritage of rigorous scholarship dating back over a thousand years and to a faith tradition dating back a thousand more. This is how we create a culture of inquiry where no topic is off limits. And a culture of hope. Anything's possible! It's Christian leadership. And it's changing the world for the better. It's higher learning. It's greater knowing. It's what makes us whole. It's what makes us region. Violence between Israeli Arabs and Jews flared recently in a way that rocked the country. There is hope, though, as one group seeks to bring Jews and Arabs together in a unique way for a shared future. Julie Stahl has the story. Ian Froman is an Israeli Jew from South Africa. Fayez Abu Sahaiban is the mayor of the Bedouin Israeli town of Rahat. What's bringing them together? Tennis. The Israel Tennis and Education Center in Ramata Sharon has been here for 45 years and today is the fulfillment of a dream. Israeli citizens, Jews and Arabs have come together not just to coexist, but to work together in partnership for a better future. This was uh, one of the greatest days I've spent almost ever because when we started this tennis facility, the idea was to reach as many children as we could. Froman is a former Davis Cup player and co-founder of the Israel Tennis and Education Centers, or ITEC. Recently, ITEC hosted an Arab Jewish Leadership Training Day as the kickoff event for ITEC's new Abraham Project. The rollout of the project is even more timely following the recent riots in mixed Arab Jewish cities like Lod that troubled the nation. To see that being a facility for children, it now has really encompassed both Jewish kids, Arab kids, and of course, all other kids. And that was the motivation. It's a very exciting event for me as the head of municipality. It's the first time I'm visiting the Israel Tennis Center. I was greeted by many people who feel very warmly toward the residents of our city. The mayor and Rahat City Council members were invited for a day of sharing food and fun with the aim of finding a way to help the young people in Rahat. My vision in Rahat is to have a sports city. We have 75,000 residents. There are many children. The education system has 25,000 children, many schools, many preschools. But I want to launch them into sports because sports gives them room to breathe, gives them everything, and makes them smile in the end. And why tennis? Abu Suhaiban and his team hit the courts to find out more. A sport, but sport in and of itself is a language, the language of patience, the language to love the other, to compete against one another, but to respect the other. I see a great opportunity here to build bridges, you know, between the cultures and, you know, and, uh, and I, f I feel that tennis is the best game, you know, to, to build this bridge. Ronan Morali runs the coaching program at iTech. Tennis educates you to respect one another, to complement one each other. There's a lot of respect and in working together, and I, I feel that this is what we, the Israeli society is lacking. Alam Ibrahimi is coordinator of ITEC's Abraham program with Israel's Arab communities. When players play one against the other, each one bats the ball to the other side. The same player that receives the ball needs to return the ball to defend what he has. And as such, it teaches the child how to be responsible, independent, know how to protect his personal interests for the greater good. Ibrahimi said when children in Rahat finish school in the afternoon, there aren't any activities for them. So the tennis center came and offered a hand and sees that they are a partner in influencing the population and producing children that are good for society. 
Born and raised in Rahat, Abu Suhaiban was first a teacher and then a principal. He says sports can be a bridge builder between Arabs and Jews, especially after the Arab-Jewish violence that affected both sides. They start by shaking hands and finish by shaking hands. That's what's good about this sport. The added value, especially in this period, at this time that we all went through as citizens of Israel, is to join hands together. There is no other place for us to live. We have to live together, to speak the language of sport. It's a language of everyone, not a language of another race or religion. The day wrapped up with a heart-to-heart -heart roundtable discussion. Froman says they plan to build a tennis center in Rahat. There's a partnership here that is developed between the city of Rahat and the tennis centers. And so it really is the beginning of what I think is going to be a tremendous era of getting together, learning to live together, using tennis as the medium in which to do so. Julie Stahl, CBN News, iTech. Ramata Sharon, Israel. Up next, they call it Amitzim, the brave, and it's reaching out in love to the orphan and the widow. Thank you for watching Jerusalem Dayline. We're committed to providing you with unbiased reporting from the Holy Land. Through weekly broadcasts, podcasts, and online media, our vision is to reach millions around the globe with the true story of what's happening in Israel and the Middle East all from a biblical and prophetic perspective. This is a big vision and is only made possible by the generous support of people like you. Call us toll free at 1-800-700-7000 or go to cbn.com slash Jerusalem Dateline and make a donation that will help spread the light of truth about Israel throughout the world. Celebrate the summer with the Superbook Summer Splash Bonus. Receive three of the best water adventures from the Bible when you join the Superbook Club. You'll receive this special bonus pack with this month's episode, Gizmo Go. Call the repair box. He said it's going to be the biggest souffle ever made. I've never seen him cook. Oh, no. Where did it go? Join the Superbook Club and get Gizmo Go. Call the repair bots, plus two copies to share with others, all for your gift of only $25. And as part of the Superbook Summer Splash Bonus, you'll receive three additional Superbook episodes featuring the best raging water stories from the Bible. The Superbook Summer Splash Bonus includes Noah and the Ark, Jonah, and Let My People Go. Join the Superbook Club today. And for a limited time, receive the Superbook Summer Splash Bonus as our way of saying thanks. Superbook Club members, free streaming for seasons one through five is now available. Hey, if you're tired and exhausted all day, you can't think clearly, and you really just need a cup or even a pot of coffee to get through your day, then join me, Dr. Josh Axe, for this new series where I'm gonna teach you how to transform your diet and use essential oils and supplements to get a better night's sleep. Wake up to your best life. Call 1-800-700-7000 to get your free DVD or booklet of Protect Your Sleep today. Spice up your summer with these delicious international recipes. Introducing Operation Blessings free light and lean recipe book. It's filled with flavors your whole family will enjoy. Plus, you'll learn about Operation Blessings work, bringing nutritious food, clean water, and medical care to millions in need. Call 1-800-730-BLESS or go to ob.org slash summer to get your free light and lean recipe book right now. The premature death of a spouse threatens the stability of a family and leaves a gaping emotional hole for the surviving wife or husband. One Israeli organization is reaching out to these families and using the Bible as their guide. Once a week, this home is filled with kids playing, parents meeting, and volunteers helping. It's called Amitzim, which in Hebrew means the brave. The goal of Amotzim is to fulfill the biblical mandate found in the scriptures to embrace and strengthen the widows and orphans. About 12,000 families in Israel have suffered the death of a parent. What we do here is what God said in, in Exodus 22. Listen, hear the voice of the orphan and the widow. And God says, I hear their voice. You listen to their voice. And it's our obligation. Hadas Glick began this effort several years ago. Her husband died in 2001 from a stroke. 
Yehuda's wife died in 2018, and later he and Hadass married. Now this former widow and widower reach out to these families in need. We understand how strong of a power and, and, and uh, effect a father means to his children, a mother means for her children, and so we come to give a hand and to strengthen, but not to replace. Netanel has been a widower for three and a half years. I quickly understood that this was a place where they spoil us. They have, you know, good fruit and food cut out for us. We don't have to work because we're on 24-7 when you're raising three children on your own. You don't really get any time to rest. And I could sit down and my kids wouldn't be on top of me as they are all the time. It was a place where I could rest. And then I found that it wasn't just a place where I could rest. It was a place where I could be amongst peers amongst people that have had a similar experience to mine, which provides a sort of safety. My husband passed away two years ago. We have two daughters, one eight and one six years old. We got to know the Amit Seam Club. It's really good for us here. They take care of us. They provide for us. It's really encouraging that there is a group of widows and widowers here that together, once a week, help each other. I'm really happy that I met Yehuda and Hadass. They are, for me, simply amazing people. Trained volunteers serve hot meals and love. They open the heart. <laughs> they come to open the heart. They come to get warm from, it, from us, from the, all the volunteers here. We come every Wednesday, meet the people. We know them, we know their names. We ask if they are not coming. They surprise if you call, why didn't you come last week? Oh, this week I will come, I will come this week. And they are very happy from this place. 13 year old Hila lost her mother two years ago to cancer. For her and her dog Louie, it's a safe place. It's nice to be in the company of equals. And what's your favorite activity here? The chatting. It helps the people here that Hadass and Yehuda clearly know the devastating loss of a spouse. When we see these orphans and widows, and I just sit around and talk to them, they're alone, nobody remembers them. And here is somebody who's caring for them and remembering them, and it gives them strength, you can't believe. Then they go back home and they're like a new person. We realize that when you don't have a father or you don't have a mother, the home needs support. What we're doing here is making a new concept, rebuilding the Torah words into reality. Into reality. They look to Isaiah the prophet who said, learn to do good, seek justice, rebuke the oppressor, defend the fatherless, plead for the widow. Glick feels the goals of Amit Seem go hand in hand with the Shalom Jerusalem Foundation that he founded. It seeks to build up Jerusalem and increase Jewish access to the Temple Mount. The Bible refers to an orphan, but it always says the orphan and the widow. It says when you're celebrating with me, your holiday at the temple, include the orphan and the widow. When you're bringing your harvest, don't forget to include the orphan and the widow. Hadass and Yehuda hope to establish 10 centers like this one throughout Israel. Well, that's such a heartwarming story, and we were moved by seeing the love at Amatzim. Well, that's all for this edition. Thanks for joining us. Remember, you can follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. And you can also access CBN content through our CBN News and other CBN apps. And don't forget to sign up for our email blasts so you can continue to receive all of our exciting CBN content. I'm Chris Mitchell. We'll see you next time on Jerusalem Dateline.